Okay, so I got the outside insulation stripped off. This is part two here. Um, got the outside insulation stripped off. Uh, you can see there may be some little wires here. If you have a nice pair of cutters, you go right around while this insulation is still on and trim this off. Any, any excess you have right here. All the way around just to clean it up because you don't want any of this shorting out against that center conductor. So now that's a good clean cut. Okay, now I'm going to take this off right here. Oops. Let me get uh, my sharp knife and we'll. It, apparently, it didn't cut all the way through. Not a big deal. You can just walk a knife around this real quick. You can also do it with a knife if you don't want to mess around with this. You can start off with the knife to begin with. But anyway, let's strip that off. As you can see, it's. Uh, you don't want to cut that strand. I just want to cut the insulation off of it. There we go. We got one more little tiny piece here. Hold it on. And just walk it through there. Okay, there. Now. This connector is going to screw onto here right like this. The center conductor will come into here, and you'll see through these holes you're going to see the ground. There's no little strands that are going to cause a short. It's important to make sure you have nothing's in your way. Now I'm going to just screw this onto here, making sure all the wires go into the center conductor. And I'm just going to tighten this down on the coax. And it's a good thing you have a pair of channel locks like this where you can do that. And you just walk it on. It's got threads inside that will make it tighten down on here and you just look through the little window and when you see your ground show up you know you've got it it's hard to put on but you get a very good seal between here and the coax by doing this and that's why I fight it that's why I've done it I trimmed the excess center conductor off you may notice that, and it's going to come up too. Okay, so I, now it's fighting me, so it means I'm down to where I've got the, the ground showing through here. I've got the center conductor sticking out through the end of it. Now I'm going to measure this with my meter continuity tester. Let me flip it over here on, on the tone. Now when I short these out, I get a tone. So I'm going to go center, the outside the center conductor. No tone nothing it's clean the other end of it i'll grab and i'm going to do a, a ground to ground check ground to ground conducted center to center continuity now all i have to do is solder this so i prefer using a good rosin core solder this is uh, 0 0.05 diameter and uh, it's the 3.3% flux. And I bought it in a half pound roll. You can get it at any of your local electronic shops. So I'm going to get the iron hot. <clears throat> this is a Weller, W E L L E R Weller uh, soldering gun. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to start getting it hot. And I'm going to walk that solder into it. And I like this, this solder having a lot of flux like this. It gives you a good connection. And uh, you get a lot of solder right in there. Don't worry about that sticks. That happens. I'm going to let it cool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish soldering this thing. Like that. Break this off and we'll need it. So now you see I, I've got the ground soldered inside. I'm going to do the other side now on the other half of it. Let me get my solder back up here and uh, let it stick out here so I can work with it. Flip it over and on the opposite side, uh, right here, I'm going to solder this one. Put my gun right there on that hole and put the solder to it. Now you can do all four of them. It's up to you. Your choice. I just do two of them uh, on each side. It gives me a good ground connection and that's all I'm interested in. If I don't make it right on these two then uh, 
there's an issue somewhere. Okay, so I've got that soldered, and the solder, as you see, is in there. Okay, now I'm going to do the center conductor while the iron is hot. Flip it back over, and it's got a little place on the end of it. You'll notice where it's got a little pocket. So I'm going to stick that solder right in there. And start soldering that tip in there. Again, I like this solder. It has a lot of flux in it, and it does a, a beautiful job. You can use a smaller solder, but it won't have the flux you need in order to make a good connection. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I have a good copper connection here. Okay, now I'm going to let that cool a little bit. I don't blow on it. It'll give you a cold solder joint. You don't know if you've ever heard of that or not, but it'll, sometimes it'll cause it to crack, and it's called a cold solder joint. The solder backs away from the material. Okay, there we go. It's cool enough I can do that. Now, I'll go ahead and do a continuity test on it. Check the meter. Okay, I'm going to go from the outside, which, by the way, is still hot, to the center. Nothing. No short. And we've already tested it end to end. We know it's, it's a good mechanical connection and a good solder connection. We've got both right there. So, I'm going to let that cool. Slide this uh, cap up there. Don't forget these little caps. Boy, they, if you ever do, you're going to have to unsolder it and start all over, which, believe me, we've all done. But that cap goes right on, it screws right onto here, all the way up, and and now we're ready, that's ready to put to use. There you are. This is W5FRT, thank you for listening, and uh, any questions, just uh, uh, drop me an email, and, uh, and you can look me up on the internet. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Seven threes.